What's going on, people? It's your boy Nando. You know what it is. It's the Pound for Pound Boxing Show in association of Dirty South Boxing. Head over to www.dirtysouthboxing.co.uk for the best boxing gear out there. Believe me, you won't be disappointed. Today, I've got a very special guest. Liverpool's very own James Hennigan. He faces uh, Dwayne Grant on the undercard of Denzel Bentley versus Felix Cash as they face for the British and Commonwealth middleweight title live on BT Sports on the 24th of April. What a card for James Hennigan to be on. He's part of Warren Boxing Management. He's 4-0. Great talent coming up in the middleweight division as well. Some cracking fights in that division for him domestically. So many fights, and I'm going to bring them up during this uh, interview. Jay Reynolds, John Harden Jr., Robbie Chapman. There's so much. So just waiting for James to come on now. Look forward to speaking to him. He's been out 14 months out of the ring. His last fight was at the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic. Be good to get that uh, ring rust off and then hopefully push on. Southern area title, another big fight in the summer as well. After this fight, Just remember, guys, in association with Dirty South, in Dirty South Boxing, head over to this website. You won't be disappointed. You can get everything customized your gym, your boxing gloves, your fight gear, your shorts, even your mouth guard as well. Believe me, you won't be disappointed, guys. Let's get James on now. How you doing, James? What's happening, mate? You're all right? Yeah, all good, mate. Just want to say thank you for taking your time speak to speaking to us today. It's, uh, it's great to finally get you on. Yeah, it's nice to speak to you, mate. Um, 14 months out of the ring, you're back on the 24th of April uh, on a big card, Denzel Bentley versus Felix Cash. First of all, how does it feel after being out of the ring so long to finally uh, to be back in action? Yeah, it's nice. Obviously, every boxer wants to be in there as, as frequently as they can and I'm, I'm no different, but obviously I took this year off to learn and, and improve my game on things which I need to improve on. But going back to it, yeah, it's a big show and, you know, it's a great fight at the way I'm fighting at and I believe it'll be a good show all round and I'm, I'm, it's an honour to be on there and getting in. Amazing. How's training going? How's camp going for this fight so far? Uh, it's good, to be honest with you. It's, we, we only had about two, three weeks notice for it, but we've been training to fight since January, so... When it come round, we, we just said, yeah, of course, and what date, and we'll be ready. And, and that was it, really. So now it's just the sharpening stuff, getting the last bit of weight down, and that's it. Job's done. Any particular names in the past year or six months that you've been sparring? Any particular names? Yeah, I think around, like, last last winter, I got some rounds in with uh, Callum Smith. I've done rounds with Jimmy Kelly. So, the, wow. you know, good, good to learn off, off the pair of them both. You know, Callum been world champion, obviously. Uh, Jimmy Box, Liam Smith for the world title a few years back. So, you know, good good to mix it with there and, and learn from them. So let's talk about your opponent, Dwayne Grant. He's, he's experienced in the ring because he's fought some great talent. He's fought uh, Jack Cullen, JJ Evans, Richie Gray, Ishmael Davis. Someone who's experienced like that um, in the ring fighting great fighters like that. Do you know much any more about him and what dangers he brings? Uh, we know he's gonna come. He's gonna he's gonna be awkward. He's you know he's been in there with good kids, so you'll have seen a lot. But you know that that's what I want. I don't I don't want someone who's gonna come there and and just not do nothing for four four rounds. I want someone who's gonna give me something, and I believe he can do that. And you'll see you'll see how good he am once he starts throwing, and I, I'll be able to show people what what I can do then. And you know I'm I'm not here to to build up like a twenty you know record fighting twenty people who have, who have never hit me back. I'd, if, if I had it my way, I'd, I'd be in 50-50 fights every single fight. And, you know, I believe this is me getting one step closer to getting better and more, you know, more entertaining fights for everyone. Let's talk about these 50-50 fights. Not not getting you to call anyone out, right? But you're in a division. For me, you're one, in the best, one of the best divisions at the moment. Well, your division is historic. Let's be honest. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Hagler. Lamotta, Roy, Roy Jones Jr. You know, you got so historically, like, the middleweight division is one of the best divisions ever. And right now, domestically, it's, it's heating up. So you got Jay Reynolds, you got John Harden Jr., you got um, Robbie Chapman, you got Josh Gooden, Ishmael Davis, 
you got so many great fighters right now domestically that you could fight. You even got Sean Phillips, who's the Southern Area champion. Is there anyone in particular that, not in a way of calling them out, but you you would love to share the ring with and be in a 50-50 fight? Uh, you know, all of them really. There's everyone you've mentioned there, you know, the ball. Anyone who's higher than me in, in the rankings, I'd, I'd, I'd like to fight because, you know, they obviously bring something to the table. And, you know, I, I believe I can learn off everyone I'm in the ring with. And you put me in with these good kids and I'll learn off them. And, and you know, I'll, I'll, believe I'll beat them. And I think that's that, that's what you've got to have going into. You know, boxing's a tough sport. And you can't go and think, uh, I'll fight him, but I won't fight him. And he's good, but I, I wouldn't want to fight him. It's You've got to, you've got to have in your mind that you, you want to fight everyone. Otherwise, I don't believe you'll get to the top. Let's talk about one of them, Sean Phillips. Obviously, you're four and zero. Is the yeah. Southern Area title something that you you got some, your your sights on? Yeah, I don't I don't think I'd be able to box for Southern Area because obviously I'm I'm from a, I think Central Area is the belt I'd have to go for, obviously because where I'm from. But yeah, you know, area titles that they're a gateway towards the domestic titles, and you know, a, a title is a title. Obviously, boxers like you know like like the titles like the belt. So, I mean, if I'd, I'd box anyone for one of them belts. I believe my my area title is vacant, so hopefully one or two fights down the line, I can I can get that. And obviously, being a good fight against another good kid. Amazing. Um, another one. He's a big name in boxing. Is John Harding Jr. Obviously, we last saw him out against the English champion Linus Adolfi live on Sky Sports. He's looking to come back. That would be a great fight, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, he's show he's shown at his level boxing on Sky and. And how good he was, and I think yeah, he put in a good performance against Jack Cullen as well, I believe, on short notice. And so he, he's proved how good he is. I mean, like I said, all, all these people who, who are performing well and they've all got good records, they're all high rank kids. I, I want to be in with them all, and you know, I think it's a sign of respect that, that, that I want to be in with them all. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want to get in there and fight someone who, who doesn't bring nothing to the table. I think. Every, every boxer really should should want to fight everyone above them. They should they should want to fight the best, and I'm the same. Hundred percent, I totally agree with you with that. Um, it's rare to hear someone say that. You know, you do get people who just think about money or say, "Oh, it's too soon," or the fight's not big enough. Uh, that's what. Uh, two, a couple of days ago, I interviewed Sonny Edwards, and he even said, "You know, so many people that he put his hand up and said, i 'I'll fight him, I'll fight him,' and then you know they were making excuses, and now." He's going on for a world title and he even said, you know, I remember the names who turned me down. Once I win, I don't want anyone yeah. calling me out the, um, because, you know, I weren't good enough for you then. Even Natasha Jonas, you know, Liverpool's very own Natasha Jonas. I, I interviewed her as well and she mentioned four names and she said she can already see that if she beats Katie Taylor, she can already see the names that didn't even want her calling her out on Twitter and she's prepared for that. So... You know, it's a shame that the, the, the boxing is like that at the moment and that no not everyone wants to fight the best. So, I, but that the great thing is, and I'm going to touch up on that, is um, you're, you're with a, a very legendary promoter, Frank Warren, and he yeah. is known for putting his fighters in 50-50 fights. There's no, you know, fighting people who are, you know, two wins and 18 losses. You know, it's always, always a 50-50 fight. Look at the main event. Felix Cash, Denzel Bentley. Two undefeated fighters putting both their their uh, belts on the line. You saw Daniel Dubois versus uh, Joe Joyce. Two people who a lot of critics thought that they should have not fought so early in their careers. But it happened. And what a performance. So I echo what you say. Um, let's talk about Frank Warren. When you first got the offer to sign with Frank Warren, how how did you feel? Was there no was there no brainer? Yeah, yeah, it's one, it's one of them. It's you know, obviously he's he's one of the biggest promoters in the sport and and has been for many many years. And it's it's nice. It's after you you, you train hard, you perform well, and you know it's it shows that like what you're doing is paying off. And then it it shows you've got to keep going now. Now you've got there. You know you can push towards titles, push towards performing on these big BT platforms, and obviously when the crowds get back in big shows with big crowds and. I think that's what every boxer wants. No, 100%. And uh, you've been looked after by uh, Freddie and Alfie and Sonny Warren. Obviously, uh, we've done some work with them before we've interviewed their fire. They're great guys as well. What, what's it like being under their 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 guidance? 
yeah, they've been, they've been, you know, they've been brilliant with me. They've, they've looked after me from me, obviously my pro debut to now, and you know, it's, it's, I can't fault them. They've, they've not done nothing there, you know, that I could fault them on. I mean, from, I've, I've known them from John, my coach. He, he put me in contact with them and said, I think you should uh, sign with these, and they'll look after you, and that's what they've done. They've, he told me if I kept performing and kept winning, and you know, I, I carried on improving. It did get me the contract and with Frank, and that's what happened. And now it's time for me to, you know, repay them by carrying on performing and start bringing some titles back to them. Hundred um, percent. Let's talk about the main event. Uh, what's your prediction of this? Break down this fight for me because it's two fighters who can box, can hit, undefeated. Um, what's your prediction of this fight? You know, I've I've been swaying, but I think I've I've landed on I think Bentley is gonna win. I think his style's a bit more unorthodox and I think just, just judging off his performances against Heffron, I think he's shown he's shown his will to win and how, how much he can how much he can win. And don't get me wrong, Felix Cash has also done the same, you know, he had that fight the year contender with Jack Cullen, which, you know, was was a brilliant fight and everyone saw what he was about, but just something about Bentley and the way the way he punches and the way he moves there, I just think he's going to take it. But I think it's going to be, you know, probably a fight of the year contender itself. Explosive. Can you see the fight guy in the distance? No, not the way the no. way they both fight. I, I just can't see it. But you know, one of them could go in there for game plans. They just box and stick and move for twelve rounds, and that that could do it. So it's whoever has the better game plan on the day, I think. Hundred percent. Plus, Tony Sims have been doing very well recently. You saw with Conor Ben, you saw with yeah. Cheeseman, you saw with Cordino. Could be the year for him. If uh, Felix Cash, um, if Felix Cash wins this fight, I'm not, I, I don't, uh, I don't encourage people to bet. But go put your money and maybe on Craig Richards uh, beat Bivol as well, because. Yeah, that's me. But it's going to be an explosive fight. It's a fight that we've been waiting for for a long time. There was rumors of Cash maybe going for the European title, but I'm so happy he's taken this fight because I don't think right now there's a bigger fight for Denzel Bentley right now domestically than this fight. And what makes it great is I'm so glad that both felt on the line. Before it was scheduled to be just for the British, they've agreed for the Commonwealth to be on the line. You can't get any better than that. Two belts and two undefeated streaks on the line. It's it's, it's incredible. And they're in your weight class as well. So yeah. that must be something that you look up to and be like, I want to be there one day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, obviously fighting for the British. The British belt is probably one of the most prestigious belts in boxing is especially for, for the purists who, who love it. You see the belt and it's probably one of the best looking belts as well. And I think every fighter wants to win it and then win it outright. And, you know, fight fighting for it's a massive honour. And it sends you on to then your Europeans, your world titles. And, you know, look at all the fighters who have won British belts and then who've gone on to bigger things. So, of course, it's nice. And the Commonwealth belt's another belt. It's been around for years and years. So I just don't think there's, there, there was any other fight really for either of them. Whoever wins this fight obviously goes on to, to massive fights then. And, that's what they'll be looking to do, and it's hopefully what I'll be looking to do in the next few years. Brilliant. I like I like what you said because I believe um, I agree with uh, after the Josh Kelly fight. The I think it was the one and only time I ever agreed with Carl Frock, and he said that um, people don't don't respect the British belt anymore. Is they don't look at it as the prestige belt that it used to be, where it's the one that opens the the path for a fighter to go on to go fight for a European or Commonwealth level and to to and it is it's is the best for me is the best looking belt it is and it's so prestigious historic as well and it's good to hear boxers that want to fight for it and and have that honor to win this fight uh, win this belt as well yeah definitely I mean everyone every boxer should want to win especially being being from the UK and Britain it's it's the belt you want. What I want to know is your. I mentioned some of the names before, like Roy Jones and Lamotta, and so many big names: Hagler, Leonard. Who inspired you? Who are the Who are the fighters that that you looked up to growing up? Uh, growing up, I watched a lot of Nazim. I, I love Nazim's style, and you know his flying, his, how flamboyant he was when he was in the ring, and his personality outside the ring. He was entertaining and. You know, for for the way he moved and for the size, when he hit like a middleweight, and I watched I watched a lot of uh, Floyd Mayweather. Just his style, obviously, was defensively he's incredible, but his mindset towards the sport and how he looked at everything, and you know, he, you you couldn't you couldn't out train him, you couldn't beat him at anything, and 
I think that's a mindset that everyone should have because it's a tough sport. But then and that's, two great, that's two great fighters to look up to because you, um, looking at your style, you're more a technical fighter. You love um, you love moving your feet and um, you, you, you're you 4-0 and, and you've won on points convincingly as well, confidently. Um, so that's two great fighters to look at. Nassim, yeah, he moved, but he, he wow, for mm-hmm. featherweight. He hit like a freaking yeah. way super middleweight, but Mayweather defensively and his footwork, he just I think he paved the way for a lot of fighters. Obviously, he he obviously grew up looking at Sh- um, Sugar Ray Leonard, but I think he improved that style his own way as well. Mm-hmm. And um, by looking at that, you can see in your work as well what how why you yeah. why he inspired you as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, both of them they, they were very unique styles and. Obviously, a lot of people emulate that style to this day, especially Floyd Mayweather and obviously the Philly Shell, which sort of come from his family, didn't it, to begin with? And, I mean, just everything, his, his ring IQ, is is the way he looked the fighters, the way the way he took what every fighter could do away from them. That's It's hard to do and it's something that you can't really be taught to have, to have a, a boxing brain like that. 100%. There's another fight happening this weekend in your uh, weight division. We've got uh, Demetrius Andrade versus Liam William. What do you think of this fight? Break down this fight for me. And in your opinion, can Liam Williams um, shock the world? Even though I don't think it is a shock. I think it is a 50-50 fight. A lot of people don't don't give um, enough credit to Liam William, in my opinion. Uh, I think I think he's got every chance to. I mean, I think it, it is a tough. It's another one. It's a 50-50 fight. And... You know, without sitting on the fence, it, it is though. You can't really take away from it. Demetrius Andre, he's a proven world champion, been world champion for years. Might not have been in the high profile fight everyone would have liked from a world champion, but he, he's proved how good he is for, for years. And, you know, he, he's got that experience. Whereas Liam Williams, he's, you know, he's had a loss and he's had tough fights, but he's also probably one of the most improved fighters in the country by far. And he's got a mentality at the minute where he can't be beaten. So, be interesting to see how, how, how the clash come come this week. If uh, Liam William wins this world title, we got Liam Smith fighting in Russia for the uh, interim title. Can you yeah. see the trip happening for the world title? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. Yeah, definitely. Would it be different from the other two? Uh, I don't. I do. I just think the only difference would be maybe Williams's confidence, but I, I still see it going as Smith beating him. I just think Liam Smith's too much of a polished fighter and technically as well. Everyone knows him for how tough he is and how strong and how he can break fighters down. But if, if you watch him fight the things he does technically to break it down, it's 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 hard to look past. I looked something up last night, and I hope I'm I'm right about this. Liverpool has never had a, a world middleweight champion before. We've had a super middleweight. You've had Callum Smith, but there's never been someone from Liverpool as a middleweight world champion. Are you the guy to be the first? Uh, to be honest with you, mate, I'm not even. I'm from a place next to Liverpool, so I wouldn't even be able to take the title, even if I did get it. I might, I might be the world's first world champion, like if, if I get a belt. But, but unfortunately, that'll stay. That'll have to stay to another middleweight because I'm, I'm not from Liverpool. But I mean, yeah, I think whoever gets that, obviously, have got big bragging rights. But are you in the? Are you, but where you're from is it technically part of Merseyside? Yeah, yeah, it's Merseyside still, so I'll, I'll okay. probably be Merseyside first, middleweight champion. Right, forget it. that's it. I think what I googled was literally the whole of Merseyside. Yeah. There's never been a middleweight world champion from the whole of that region, so that's what I meant. Okay, would you be the first yeah, man yeah. to be the first world middleweight champion from Merseyside? Yeah, I think because Liam Smith won it super well, the way he did, and he obviously called him at super middle, and then, so yeah, I mean... It'd be it'd be an honour to, to do that, and I mean everyone wants to win a world title, and it's it's what you're going to score for. So if you don't want to win a world title, you're probably doing it wrong. So of course that's that's what I aim to do, and hopefully I keep improving and keep winning, and I get the chance to do so. I don't know if you're a football fan. I don't know if you're a blue or a red, but is the dream is the dream to fight in one of those stadiums, or is is there a bigger dream to fight somewhere else? Uh, I think the dream just to fight anywhere in in Liverpool or Merseyside in, in a big sold out, sold out arena stadium. Uh, 
venue just just full just full of everyone from around here and you know put on a good show and performance and, and bring a title to them i think i think that's the dream for every for every fighter as well everyone wants to do that 100 percent um let's talk about natasha jonas obviously she's from liverpool um what's your prediction of this fight because arguably right now apart from the savannah marshall clarissa shields this is probably the biggest fight in women's boxing right now yeah i mean i think natasha was very unlucky not to get the decision in in a last fight on on the matchroom show and i believe i think i think people might be writing natasha off for some for some reason but you know you don't go to the level she's got without without being how good she is and obviously the olympic experience the team gp experience and katie taylor arguably is probably maybe the greatest women boxer of all time and she's definitely the greatest olympic women boxer of all time and she everyone knows how good she is but you can't write natasha off she, she's technically very good she's strong she's south poor obviously which which will match up so it's, it's a good fight and i hope she can do it will it go the distance I think so, yeah. I've got a feeling it will. I think I think it'll be a very tough fight. I think I think Natasha will be be trying to take her second take Katie's technical ability away from it. But I, I do see it going a distance, yeah. One uh, question I ask all my um all my guests, uh, because if it happens, I'm not gonna say when if it happens, um we're gonna do like a highlight reel of everyone's answers. We got possibly the biggest fight in British um, boxing history, maybe the biggest fight in boxing history itself. Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. Yeah. Who wins and why? I'm Tyson Fury. I think just his style for a heavyweight. It's I don't think any heavyweight in the world beats him. Just just for the way he is. I think the best chance anyone had was Deontay Wilder coming, you know, on in the first fight when he was still coming back, still getting into shape. I haven't fought anyone that caliber since Klitschko and you know, but now now the way he is, the way he looks at the mini, he's trimmed down again and he's he, he looking like he's he's back to back to his best and he he's another one. He he's got the mindset where he can't be beaten. You see you seen him take that shot off uh off Wilder in the first fight when he went down and I think I, I believe he was knocked out for a good few of them seconds until he got up. Because yeah. he got up and he got up and then carried on and then pushed at Wilder. So he's got the mentality of a champion, and but it's taking nothing away from Anthony Joshua. He's strong, and if he hits you on the chin, you're gonna feel it. You know what I mean? He's one of them fighters. It's gonna be a great fight if it happens. It, Hopefully, it, for boxing and boxing fans, we we deserve this fight. Definitely, James. Before I let you go, 24th of April, you versus Dwayne Grant. What can the fans and what can Dwayne Grant expect from James from that night? Just expect to see me, you know, perform, see a technical performance, see me. Hopefully, I'll get to show you things I haven't seen because hopefully Dwayne Grant will come to, you know, fight me. He'll come to, he'll come to throw a lot of shots. And I believe when people throw shots at me is when you see how effective I am and, and what I can do. I'm, I'm, I'm a very good counter puncher. And, you know, I can punch him when my opponents don't go into shells and I can hurt them. And hopefully I get a chance to do that and, and show everyone how good I am. Brilliant. We look forward to seeing you in action on the 24th. We've heard so many great things about you, Freddie and Alfie. Um, yeah. Can't wait to see you in action. James, I hope um, in a few years I will put this out and said I spoke to Merseyside's future middleweight champion. Hopefully, mate. That's it. That's the plan. I want to say thank you for taking your time to speak to us today. I want to wish you the best of luck on the 24th of April. And I hope we can catch you soon for whenever you get a bigger fight this year. And as well definitely mate have a nice day thank you for speaking to me anytime stay safe mate take care thank you so uh...